Hi everyone, I'm retired meteorologist Pat Prokoff and today is Tuesday, January the 16th and it's mild at the moment outside but temperatures are going to be plummeting this afternoon and then a hard freeze coming in for tonight but then thereafter we're going to see a little bit of a warm up then another hard freeze, maybe a touch colder than uh, what we're seeing tonight for over the weekend but then following that we're going to see a, a pretty good warm up that's going to be extended for several days if not a couple of weeks uh, beyond that so let's talk about first of all protection of your plants your pets and your pipes the three p's that's always very important and I'll talk about a little bit about el nino and the uh, conditions for what's expect it for this summer coming up. Will it be hot as it was last summer or will it be even hotter? Well, we'll take a look at that at the end of the video. But right now, let's go into the temperature map and look, it is cold. Uh, temperatures are still below zero across a large portion of central Canada, western, well, most of Canada, and then going into the central portion of the United States. And that cold air now is surging southeastward heading into our area, zooming in on the uh, maps itself. Uh, temperatures have warmed to about above zero by about two or three degrees over in the state of Iowa where it's been extremely cold there and temperatures basically across the uh, uh, center portion of the uh, north part of the country are above zero except for Montana still slightly below zero there but uh, we're seeing temperatures around our area in the 50s but it's already down to 32 degrees in Atlanta and that's as of uh, one o'clock this afternoon on a Tuesday and uh, there goes the cold air uh, another surge of it looking at the map there but let's take a look at the advisories first of all and uh, not too many advisories for weather conditions there is a, a you know winter storm warning in effect for portions of Maine up over here and uh, also um, some wind warnings across uh, the uh, Great Lakes states into the upper Ohio River Valley and also over into the Tennessee Valley uh, wind chill alerts in effect for that area there with a hard freeze in effect for portions of the uh, southern portion of the country. Uh, perhaps a hard freeze warning will be issued or at least a watch for our area later on today and then again for the weekend and off to the northwest. Uh, there is a winter storm warning in effect for Montana and Idaho into the Washington area and Oregon uh, and Idaho, southern Idaho as well. But other than that, not too much going on. Let's talk about the uh, jet stream right now. And that's the important thing that's going on across our region. Well, across the country, as a matter of fact, and the continent. Uh, the jet stream, as it, I'm waiting for it to populate, there it is. This is almost like the polar uh, uh, vortex right here that's shifted a little bit southward. It broke off from the polar area, from the uh, polar regions, and it shifted south into the northern portions of Canada around Hudson Bay. See, it's pumping down some very cold air across the center and eastern portion of the country. Then you have the subtropical jet stream pushing back at it, moving off to the northeast. Uh, well, anyway, this is going to dominate our weather for the next five days, this polar vortex here pumping in the cold air. Now, over here, over in the Pacific Ocean, you can see a very strong subtropical jet stream, and that's uh, now moving in from the uh, uh, or on Midway and the uh, uh, Hawaiian Island areas, and that's going to be pushing eastward in toward the United States, and that's going to be influencing our weather after next week, after the cold wave on Monday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, we're going to start warming up. In actuality, this is going to bring us into the 70s by then. But let's take a look at the conditions across the region. And first of all, the forecast low temperatures uh, for our area. And uh, for the country, you know, Temperatures tonight will be still around single digits across many portions of the uh, states, below zero or around zero across the upper Mississippi Valley. We're going to be dropping down into the freezing, freezing point around here. I'm going to take a, low, a closer look at the southeast in just a moment. But let's take a look at the, uh, this is for Wednesday morning. Uh, Wednesday night, Thursday morning, temperatures still below freezing here, moderating a little bit to the uh, center portion of the country. They're in the teens instead of below zero, but they're still around zero to slightly below zero. Uh, across the northern portion of the country and the Dakotas they're in the uh, particularly North Dakota uh, around 10 below zero and then going into Friday morning Thursday night Friday morning that cold air seeps a little bit further southward once again getting down to about one below zero just north of Wichita Kansas at Salina Kansas 
or in Saline County, but we're going to be warming up a little bit on Friday morning. But let's take a look at our forecast closer here. And for tonight, uh, this is for Wednesday morning, daybreak, temperatures are going to be in the middle 20s and around the Statesboro area, uh, uh, 15 degrees in the Atlanta metropolitan area. Here we are in Savannah, around 28, 26 degrees. Uh, a little bit warmer on the islands, but still below freezing, even on Hilton Head Island. I expect to see freezing uh, temperatures there. Now, what about um, uh, Thursday morning, Wednesday night, Thursday morning? It's still going to be cold, but not quite as cold, but still cold enough. A hard freeze once again, 30 degrees in Savannah, maybe 28, uh, 23 in Statesboro. Even the islands will be flirting with freezing temperatures, might be slightly above freezing on the barrier islands. Uh, that's for uh, Thursday morning, Wednesday night, Thursday morning. What about Thursday night, Friday morning? Well, there we go. We got warmer air moving into the area from the marine region. However, that's going to be short-lived as the next surge of cold air moves in across the area. For uh, Friday night, Saturday morning, we'll be back down into the middle 20s uh, in the um, greater Savannah area. Even on Hilton Head Island, it'll be in the mid to upper 20s there. And uh, interior portions of Georgia back to 15 degrees in Atlanta. What about Saturday night, Sunday morning? Uh, I think this is going to be our coldest night of the winter. We're going to see temperatures dropping down into the upper teens in the Statesboro area. 16 in Augusta, 19 in Macon. Uh, Claxton, Reedsville, you're going to be right around that 20 degree mark, maybe 18, 19 degrees. Uh, Brunswick is going to be down into the middle 20s, 23 here in Savannah. Even on Hilton Head Island, it's going to be in the mid to upper 20s there. So everybody's going to be in the deep freeze Saturday night, Sunday morning. But then after that, things begin to moderate somewhat. And as we look at to uh, uh, Sunday night, Monday morning, uh, still cold, uh, 23 in Statesboro, 30 in Savannah. Uh, we're going to be, though, uh, right around the freezing mark on the barrier islands, but then thereafter, it's going to start warming up nicely. Uh, looking at the, uh, I want to show you something here as well, the, uh, uh, look at the satellite imagery here. Let me refresh this and bring it out. Uh, there's the cold front right there that's going to be moving uh, steadily eastward throughout the uh, afternoon hours and passing the coast by before sunset tonight. And we're in the middle 50s, upper 50s right now in the Savannah area, but by sunset we'll be in the middle 40s perhaps by then. Uh, over here, well there's a jet stream right there, but over here, look at this. This is snow cover. The sky is clear over here in Missouri and Arkansas. Uh, there's the Mississippi River, uh, Memphis right over here. Uh, there's the Tennessee River there, clearing out in the Nashville area. That's snow on the ground, a lot of snow cover across this portion of the country. As a matter of fact, uh, look at how dense, that's clear weather out there. That's snow on the ground. You can see the rivers coming through. Uh, Michigan is under total snow cover as well. And even to the south, there was a band of light snow stretching from northeastern Texas across northern Louisiana. You can see it on the satellite picture and then into southern Arkansas, even portions of Mississippi. Uh, there is snow on the ground, northwest portions of Alabama. All right, let's take a look at the conditions for the next several days because tonight's going to be a hard freeze across our region. There's my forecast on savannapat.name. That's my website. And a hard freeze overnight. Uh, the showers will be ending uh, throughout the early afternoon hours and then clearing tonight. A little bit on the breezy side as well. And then uh, for uh, Wednesday, uh, again, a hard freeze overnight. Uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, once again, very cold temperatures with freezing weather conditions. But then thereafter, uh, look at this, the extended outlook, my, not, it's not a forecast, it's an outlook, it's the average of each week. Uh, but uh, of course, this week number one right now through or next week, it's going to be much below the normal. Normal high for this time of the year is 61, normal low is 40. But then by the following week, the middle of next week, going into the next weekend, temperatures will be above the normal. May, we might even see temperatures in the 70s to uh, 74 or 75 degrees sometime in the following week, week number two, back to normal, week number three, four, and five, then maybe slightly below normal by middle of February to the end of February, but then normals are increasing by this time of the, the uh, year, 67 for normal high, 644 for the normal low. One other thing I want to look at, you can find it on my website, savannapat.name, uh, the feels like temperature or wind chill. And sometimes we call it the apparent temperature or the heat index in the wintertime, the apparent temperature or the wind chill effect. That's the effect of uh, how it feels against the human body. Uh, the temperature would be without any wind. 
In other words, it's, it's showing you how much heat is being drawn away from your body. And uh, for tonight and tomorrow morning, those wind chills will be in the upper teens across most of our area and uh, uh, in the middle teens across the interior portions of Georgia. Now going into the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, once again, we're going to see particularly Saturday or Sunday morning temperatures in the uh, mid-teens across uh, the greater Savannah area and interior portions of Georgia, same thing in middle teens and lower teens in some locations, for example, Ellabel, Glenville, um, uh, Guyton, 11 degree wind chill forecast. And then uh, for Hilton Head and, and the uh, Buford area, Bluffton area, again, about the same thing. Wind chill Sunday morning in the teens. So when you're planning to get out or go to church on Sunday morning, you're gonna to have to wrap up because this puts us in the what's called the danger zone. Uh, for the wind chill are here the, the blue area is dangerous so if you're not fully protected you could easily get frostbite over a short period of time and of course hypothermia uh, it's not a good thing either so all right I want to talk also about something else and it's the uh, conditions for uh, setting up outside for the conditions for tonight and, and, and over the weekend. So you want to cover up your plants. If you have any plants, and I do, I have a winter garden going on and I have tomato plants going. I got tomatoes on them. Uh, you can see them right there. And I got cauliflower. I picked most of the broccoli uh, and I got two heads of cabbage left, but um, I got a lot of cauliflower still. Go ahead and uh, protect your plants for tonight. I put in, uh, for my like for example, the tomato plants, two covers. I put a, a sheet over the top. I have some hoops up there, so it helps hold the sheets on top. And then I put a thicker cover on overhead. Now, if you're gonna use plastic, uh, don't use plastic directly. Put the sheet on first and then put a layer of plastic on top of that. Uh, the cold air will go right through the plastic. Um, uh, it, it's good for protection of the frost, but not for the cold. But uh, uh, cloth is much better use in this particular example. Also, your pipes, um, you want to protect the pipes. So outdoor plumbing, uh, you want to uh, turn the water off. And uh, if you have a... Uh, um, main shut off you can do that and then open up the faucets so that there's any ice in the line will be able to expand outward uh, if it's trapped inside the faucet it will uh, freeze and expand and, and that will break your pipe so also you want to drip your pipes um, for the next several nights particularly tonight and again on uh, friday night saturday night and sunday night you're going to need to drip the pipes particularly if they're exposed to the outside wall even though they're inside if they're exposed to the outside wall uh, you're going to need to drip those pipes and um, what else have we have out here? Oh, the pets. Oh, yeah. Got to take care of Grizabella the cat and all your other pets as well. Uh, take care of your pets. Make sure that they uh, have a warm place to go inside, preferably. And also keep in mind that they need water. And if you leave their water bowl outside and they're outside, the water freezes. It's very difficult to get fresh water. So keep that in mind. And, you know, last summer was one of the hottest summers uh, on record for the globe. Uh, across the, the uh, world. And uh, part of that was due to, well, the El Nino effect. And another part was due to the actual warming of the atmosphere through the input of carbon dioxide and other heat trapping gases in the atmosphere. The question is, what will it be this summer? And it looks like it's going to be uh, as hot, maybe a touch hotter, because El Nino will be continuing into the middle portion of uh, next year. And that uh, is, is keeping the ocean temperatures very warm. And right now, the ocean temperatures are at their highest levels they ever have been since uh, uh, the industrial, at least, well, since humans have walked the earth. And uh, the uh, warmer waters will dictate warmer temperatures because the, the oceans cover about 71% of the globe and they hold a lot of heat. So that takes a long time to dissipate or, or to build up. And once it's built up, it's there for a while. So it looks like this year is going to be just as hot as it was last year. Now, the other caveat that you have to look at, the El Nino is expected to start breaking down by uh, the end of spring, early summer. You might say, well, that's good news because that allows some cooler waters to start developing and, and, and sloshing across uh, the El Nino regions. But it also means El Nino is the breaks on the hurricane. So when the El Nino is uh, running and uh, flowing, uh, we have less hurricanes in the Atlantic Basin. But if the El Nino system dies down, well, you know what? 
that could cause an increase in hurricane activity. And with the warm waters already set and then the El Nino breaking down, uh, those winds from the El Nino, which are the breaks that develop uh, on for developing hurricanes, is gone. Uh, you have nothing to stop the development of hurricanes. The next hurricane season might be a rough one. Uh, 2024 hurricane season. Will that be something to look uh, out after for uh, the next several months as we get into the hurricane season, which begins June the 1st. Uh, so we got a while to yet work about uh, and worry about that. But right now, the big worry is the temperatures for the next several nights, not global warming, but we're in a deep freeze. Uh, which is going to be uh, prevalent uh, for the next several nights. At least it's coming in the middle of January. That's good for us gardeners anyway. Um, it, well, it's January. It's supposed to be cold, isn't it? Uh, it's just not this cold. But uh, it's 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 in the uh, going to be in the low to middle 20s across many areas. All right. I rambled on long enough. I'm going to let you go. Thanks for watching. And uh, thanks all uh, everyone who has supported my channel. And if you have any comments, please leave your comments below. That's always very helpful. And if you haven't liked this uh, uh, channel yet, please hit the like button and, and follow me on my YouTube channel and on my website, savannahpat.name, and on my Facebook page and my Instagram pages. That's, uh, you know, Pat Prokop's Weather and Nature page. All right. Stay warm. Bye.